Now, we have introduced magnetic resonance as a very insensitive technique. We are limited by the equilibrium magnetization, which is limited by the Boltzmann distribution, and we have clearly established that this technique is not suitable for detecting the signal from just a few molecules. But we have to get a decent signal to be able to measure it. And this is typically done by the approach of averaging. So multiple acquisitions are being um, acquired, be it for spectroscopy, for N NMR, be it for MRI, this is generally the case. So what one does is one applies the same experiment over and over again and by averaging obtains a sensitivity and SNR that is uh, increased. So we have the situation in this case that RF pulses of flip angle alpha are applied every TR seconds and they are applied this n times. And now the question is, at what point, under what conditions, is the transverse magnetization, which is proportional to the signal, maximal? So we have um, two parameters. We have the flip angle alpha and the repetition time TR. The, and what one now is interested in is calculating the flip angle alpha as a function of TR. It is clear that if one waits so long that one has um, equilibrium magnetization, so 5 times T1, e to the minus 5 is equals to 0 0.01, 5 times T1 gives us the equilibrium magnetization, at that point the optimal flick angle is 90 degrees. However, if our TR is very short, and we always apply a 90 degree uh, flip angle, then we will not get any signal we've seen already uh, at the beginning. Uh, uh, at the end of last week's course, we have seen an example thereof where we get no signal. So this is the strategy here. We want to figure out what is the good choice of the flip angle as a function of TR. So here is the experiment. We have an RF pulse alpha, flip angle alpha. We detect the signal. We have the RF pulse alpha applied again. We detect the signal here again. And we'll call here the signal at the beginning of the second RF pulse. We'll call this M, the transverse magnetization at time zero. That is our signal that we wish to optimize. This time here is equals to TR. We'll call this TR. And now we will assume that before the application of the RF pulse, any transverse magnetization has decayed away uh, in the time of TR second. This is usually a good approximation and it shall suffice for the calculation here. So we'll assume that we have no transverse magnetization and we just have magnetization along Z at this time point. So our Z magnetization as a function of time here, this is again the general solution of the uh, differential equation for the Z component is given by this term here which describes the return to equilibrium magnetization and this term here which describes longitudinal coherence. Now let's assume that we are doing a number of these alpha degree pulses. It can be a thousand, ten thousand, a few hundred, or so on. And after these RF pulses and the nth TR, so let's say we have done a hundred uh, uh, TR periods, RF pulses followed by a hundred, uh, hundred RF pulses followed by a hundred TR periods, we have a z-magnetization at that point, and we'll call that mz of n. So at 100 or 1000, doesn't matter what the n is, it has to be sufficiently big. In practice, it's actually 3 to 5 is already sufficient, but we'll see that later. So we'll call this magnetization here just before this RF pulse, after, um, after n TR periods, n applications of alpha RF pulses and TR periods, mz of n. Now, a flip angle alpha is applied, and so the mz at time zero, that is the z-magnetization here at this time, that would be here, is given by mz before the RF pulse times cosine alpha. We've already seen that relationship. That's the magnetization that's left after a flip angle of alpha. Now, during this period, we'll consider the T1 recovery. So mz of n plus 1 is equals to this term here. That's essentially using this equation here by substituting mz of n here co times cosine alpha as mz of zero. So we'll take this term, substitute it in this equation. We have the terms 
uh, rearranged here so that the exponential term is on this on this side. And so this mz of n plus one, that's the, uh, the z magnetization just before the second rf pulse here in this scheme. And I've regrouped the terms here and we have m0, the return to equilibrium, and here's the longitudinal coherence term. Now, we're going to apply now a steady state condition. We're going to assume that a sufficient number n, small n, of RF pulses and TR periods has been applied so that the mz of n plus 1 and the mz of n, that they are equal. We can assume that this happens at some point. At some point it will always recover to the same z magnetization and then we will call this magnetization equals mz n plus 1 and we'll just call it mz. So we have now here mz n plus 1, here we have mz of n. After n periods we'll now assume that these two are equal. So we'll set them equal, I've done this here, and we'll put the terms that contain mz on the left side and we're left with the terms that contain m0 on the right side. And so we can now express the z magnetization as a function of the equilibrium magnetization, as a function of the time between RF pulses, the repetition time, and as a function of the flip angle here, the cosine alpha term. Now, this is not yet our signal. This is just the equilibrium z magnetization that we have just before this RF pulse here. So we are now interested in the equilibrium transverse magnetization because it gives us the, the signal that we obtain. So the transverse magnetization here after this RF pulse is equals to the z magnetization before the RF pulse times sine alpha. We'll set this in and now we have the equilibrium magnetization equation here. So that's our transverse magnetization at equilibrium is proportional to m0 is influenced by the flip angle and influenced by the TR over T1. And so we have now TR over T1 on one side and cosine uh, and the flip angle alpha that influence this equilibrium magnetization. This is a fairly fundamental equation here um, that describes us the influence of the signal as a function of flip angle and time between RF pulses. So now comes the question. This was a fairly complicated equation and the question is how does this signal depend on TR, time between RF pulses, T1, the T1 relaxation, and the flip angle alpha. So if you plot the signal versus flip angle alpha, and here I'll, I'm re-plotting, showing this equation again that we just derived on the previous slide. This is the same expression here. And now let's look at what, what we observe. So if TR over T1 is 10, E to the minus 10 is essentially zero. So we have, this is M0 sine alpha divided by one. So we have M0 sine alpha. So our signal describes very nicely a sinusoidal um, function here. And the maximum is at 90 degrees, not surprisingly. Even for TR over T1 equals five, here E to the minus five is 0 0.01, we get essentially the same behavior. So this is not surprising. Then as we see, if we plot this function here for different TR over T1s, as TR over T1 gets smaller and smaller, then we can see that the maximum shifts further and further away from 90 degrees. So here's this function plotted. And if I've tried to, with this dashed line, indicate where the maximum of the flip angle is. So at what choice of flip angle do we get the maximum transverse magnetization? And here it's expressed normalized to m0. So if you look now at this um, flip angle, so we want to calculate the transverse magnetization, which is our signal, the maximum where, at what flip angle alpha is the maximum obtained. And this is done by taking the derivative of the transverse magnetization of this expression with respect to the flip angle and setting it to zero. I will spare you the math of doing this. This is a simple um, cumbersome exercise of multiple calculations. We'll just take the derivative of this term here with respect to alpha and I'll give you the solution here which is cosine of alpha is equals e to the minus tr over t1 where alpha is called the Ernst angle. So if we plot this now 
we have the TR over T1, and notice here the logarithmic scale, the angle here in degrees, we have at a very high TR over T1, we have the not surprising 90 degrees, and as the TR over T1 gets shorter and shorter, this asymptotically goes to zero. Of course, if this goes to TR over T1 goes to zero, then the cosine alpha goes to one, that is a zero degree flip angle. And this optimal flip angle is called the Ernst angle. It's been named after Richard Ernst, a physical chemist from Zurich, who received for his work, among also this work, he received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1991.